Gary, a stroke survivor and BIND member. And I'm Kezia, a brain injury survivor and a member of BIND as well. And welcome to BIND Waves. Welcome. Today we're going to be trying to ask a question and trying to figure it out. Is a concussion considered a brain, brain injury? And we have a great guest. His name is Brian. And he's an NFL player. And he's going to try to educate us on how that perspective handles brain injury. And hopefully we'll be watching his podcast as well. So welcome, Brian. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Bind Waves, the official podcast of the Brain Injury Network of Dallas. I'm Brian White, Bind's Executive Director. On each episode, we'll be providing insight into the brain injury community. We'll be talking to members and professionals regarding their stories and the important role of Bind's Clubhouse. We work as a team to inspire hope, community, and a sense of purpose to survivors, caregivers, and the public. Thank you for tuning in to Bind Waves. Let's get on with the show. Thank you. So I'm so excited to have you. Yeah, I'm um, excited to be here. <laughs> good. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience as an NFL player and how your experience with concussions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I played in the NFL for eight seasons with three different teams. Uh, Arizona, Miami, and San Fran. And uh, I'm not a current player, of course, I'm retired. And what was the other part of the question you asked? Yeah, just about your experience as an NFL player and concussions. Yeah, yeah um, concussions were, when I played, it was kind of a laughing thing. Like, man, that, that dude knocked me out. Or I got him back and just you know, stuff like that, it was like a joke. And of course, sometimes it wasn't funny because your eyes would cross and you couldn't see. And you go over to the sideline and you're stumbling. And they basically just try to put you through a follow my finger. Do you know what day it is? You know, still the same kind of culture kind of it is when it comes to dealing with former players. I don't know how the current player situation is. Um, but they are making a lot of changes that I think are making a good impact. Well, while you were playing, did they start talking about concussions more and that concussions can cause brain injury, or was that not really a topic? That was not a topic at all. You know, I mean, all of us had gotten to the, I would call the pinnacle of what we wanted Mm -hmm. to do, you know, and, um, just to be there was an honor. So certainly having a a head injury you know you didn't have any lasting effects you know but um, we were taught to be tough suck it Mm -hmm. up let's go I remember plenty times where I got knocked out and the doctors were over there on you know on the sideline and I would have coaches like hey you ready to go in I need you such someone else got hurt and you're gonna have to play and so you just you're out there playing you know yeah, that's like actually really interesting. A lot of uh, people that are big NFL fans, uh, football is like their world. Yeah. Um, really, we're trying to wonder about that. Like throughout your career, like what was your experience? Like what were some side effects that you were feeling? Like how did you know it was a concussion? Like what are how are it, how is it feeling like now? Well, during my career, I never really paid attention to my brain. I paid attention to everything else. You know, I conditioned myself. I did everything that I was supposed to do. And, you know, I was, I think, pretty intelligent. You know, um, I like to say I can walk and talk and tie my shoes. You know, and with the NFL, you're good to go. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, like when the concussion settlement came out, um, it was, I think everybody saw, there was a $4 million payout if you were a player and you know the only way they can find CTE is the after death right mm-hmm. now and it's like every player had it so they were just they remove I just say this they removed that from the whole settlement payout Sim- I think simply because everybody has it you know it's not a thing of if you have it it's how you're actually managing it and that's the part that that got me while I was playing and a few years after 
I got out, you know, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't understand why I was starting to think a certain way. And Right. So, like, did does it cause, as, as you retired, I guess, probably is when you started noticing more symptoms such as, like, depression or did it affect your sleep? Yeah. I mean, nightmares all the time. But, of course, I'm a tough guy. I'm not going <laughs> to complain about that. Of course yeah. not. You know, um, you would get headaches and just, yeah, depression started really kicking in hard. You know, uh, I like to tell people I was running around with a bag over my head because I was mm. confused. Mm. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Um, it's just like it was over. Good luck. Yeah, I yeah. think that's, yeah, I'm sorry. I think that's something that really connects with a lot of um, people here at Bind, members that are Bind and people that are watching and really wondering about brain injury, like what does that mean? Yeah. So I think that's something that really connected with people talking and really are the ones that were asking, like, do you, did it change your sleep, depression, all of that? Yeah. Um, so, like, what do you currently do that really, like, supports you in that way? Like, we are so thankful for, you know, I had a stroke. Um, and so did she. Yeah. Like, that we have yeah. this support system here at Bind. Yeah. Um, like, what do you do currently that helps you support, like, as, a, as an athlete, that you had this like type of life, you're you're really strong, <laughs> and like, uh, do you have like a support system or you know something that helps you out currently after your experience? Yeah, I, I can tell you this. Uh, I call him my big brother, Derek Martin. He, I always say he saved my life because he was like, "B, let me ask you something. Do do you get your uh, unemployment?" I was like, "Unemployment." He was okay. like, yeah, you were employed. You have rights to that. And I didn't know. And when I tried, we were like a day or two late. It was like, I couldn't believe it, but that was part of the running around with my with a bag mm -hmm. over my head. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know anything. So I'm trying to adjust on the fly. You know, I'm supposed to get these jobs. All these people said they work, you know, love to have me. And once you're out of the NFL, now you're a former player. Mm -hmm. You're not attractive anymore if they can't make any money off of you, basically. But now I get a lot of emails to where they're doing career fairs and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm really glad they they have that now. But it... it um, it was really tough transitioning for me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, I I was severely depressed and and really angry, and yeah. you know, I I was pretty much mad at myself, you know, because I I called myself one thing, but I'm acting a different way, and I don't know why. It's like why do I keep having these thoughts and, you know, just trying to move on. Like, my faith at the time, you know, you're just supposed to, uh, I guess, pray about it and believe that you're not carrying it, but that's not the case right. all the time. It's like I had real struggles, and it wasn't until I could talk to Doc, you yeah. know, that I started to understand that, that you're a human that had a you had a severe brain injury mm -hmm. and and this is what's expected and i was like they never told us that yeah and i, I my anger kind of hit a peak and i did something really bad and um reached out to the nfl trust um and they 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 took me in and really helped me get my life kind of on track and you know, I, yeah. I started to understand that it, it was a term called quality of life, mm -hmm. you know, wellness. And for me, I punished myself. So instead of doing something that I love to do, I wouldn't do anything, you mm -hmm. know. And that's, that's good to hear, though, that the NFL has something set up for y'all afterwards, after you've retired, to help, help you cope with concussions and kind of move forward with your life. Yes. Because, I mean, it does, like, thinking about it just as a kid, you know, I grew up a cheerleader, you know, yeah. state of Texas, so watching the guys oh, get hit all yeah. the time, you know, broken necks, just crazy stuff. Yeah. But 
I think a big question that a lot of our members and subscribers have is, do helmets really help? Do you think they really help? And have they gotten better over the years? They have definitely gotten better. Um, it looks to me, the technology, when I see it, you know, it looks like they help. Um, I'm pretty sure they do. Um, and just the whole mindset of how you're playing football, I think, has changed. You know, with oh, this good. new generation, they're learning different tackling techniques mm -hmm. and things like that. And for us, it was like, I always ask people, what's the first thing you did when y'all put on pads? And I think it's called, the we used to call it like the Oklahoma drill. When you just line up and you go head up and have big collisions and okay. get practice started mm -hmm. off, camp started off right. And it's like everybody was having just a straight run, hit, compete, see who wins, you know. And things like that happen in every level, you well, know. Yeah. And I'm glad some awareness is shared now, but... Um, if you play the game the right way, I think you can minimize some of your um, injuries, you know, but you, it's actually, you have to play it real fast. You can't be timid, All right. you know, because when you're timid, that's when they drop their head at the last second oh, yeah. and then they have head to head collisions and a lot of times what I'm seeing, it's not even the defensive player's fault. It's the offensive player who's ducking down and trying to, we call, run it up, run over them, you know. But, um, yeah, um, they, 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 they seem to help, but they're not a all in all, well, of no. course. Yeah. And as yeah. football players, we, we feel guilty because we signed up for this. This is what I do. This is what I've been telling everybody I am, that I was created to be a football player. And some people hated that I used to say that, but that's just really what I believe. Right. And it actually came true, you know, and it taught me a valuable lesson about this world, the universe, yeah. you know, the, the, the principles. They, they actually work, you know, but at the same time, you don't, you, I, I don't know, I got this vision. You climb the ladder to get to your ultimate goal but you don't realize what else is on the other side of that door right. where, you, where you're where you going, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing that I, I wish they would have told us. I yeah. wish they would have educated my wife, you know, our kids, you know, that, hey, uh, don't be surprised if you see dad do this or if you see him do that. If you start seeing this behavior, I want you to call maybe this number and let us know. You know, it's, it's, it was nothing like that. Hmm. And that's my vision. I want, they, 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 they sent me to the, the um, let me calm down. <laughs> it's okay. Take they, your time. They sent me to the Eisenhower Center and it was in um, Michigan. It was actually in Michigan. It was cold. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Snow, ice everywhere. There's no way I could live in Michigan. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna even lie. <laughs> uh, much respect, but that's where they sent me, and and it really did help. But at the same time, I was cynical because I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm here and I'm getting treatment every day. I don't, I don't hear my my world isn't noisy. Yeah, interesting. You know, I call my world noisy sometimes. Even when you're just sitting home mm -hmm. watching TV, there are things playing in your head, in the back of your head. And before you know it, you, you find yourself not even breathing. And, yeah. you know, you're like, man, I need to, well, for me, I need to slow down my mind. Yeah. It plays things that I really shouldn't be thinking on, mm -hmm. that I really try to put away. But it's things that happen, and it's like I, I try to say I let it go, you yeah. know. But it's like I haven't let it go like this. 
it really does bother me, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that's a, for for us, that's one of the consequences of concussions is repeated. I think, uh, yeah, everything that you're sharing right now, honestly, like I'm already like learning so much and thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing a lot of details um with football again like being so liked and being like so popular to be like loved by the united states really it's like number one like who sits down and watches tv every sunday football yeah yeah same here i still watch it (laughs) yeah they were like wondering like like, how do you know or how did you get diagnosed that there was something going on with concussion? Like, you were sharing that you were sent to, um, like, to be taking th- treatment and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Like, if you don't want to answer again, totally understandable. But do you know, no. like, it took 10 hits or something like that? Like, do you know how many or? I have no idea, y'all. Y- they, yeah. they always ask that. And I remember times in high school where I was like, damn, that hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, or oh, like, man, that that really did hurt, but I can't act like it. You know, I got to so. bounce back up and, you know, so there are like numerous occasions, you know, um, that that happened. And when I was in the NFL is when I really started to notice that um, something's not right. Right. You know, like I got hit in Detroit and I'm like man I can't see I'm blurry and I got coach telling me to suck it up let's go so I say I'm all right doc I'm cool I go in and you know I don't play worth a crap you know (laughs) Mm -hmm. but you're you're kind of just out there and um hold on what was the question again No, it was just like kind of wanted to know about the concussions. I guess if you even knew how many, but I think that's a crazy, like very interesting response because you just mentioned since high school, Mm -hmm. and then here you go high school, like being a like an NFL player. Like that's that was very interesting. Like since high school, that's very interesting. And And I'd say I I forgot that I played um, what we call junior high, uh you know, and it was plenty in that. You know. Yeah. You know, wow. So. That is very interesting. And I know, like, I'm a big hockey fan, so I know yes. they've got um, concussion protocols that if you get hit head to head, you yeah. go you go back and they do their screening. And I hope it's a little more than what you said. You know, it's not just, you know, here's some smelling salts and you're okay, go back out. Yeah. I mean, I know that all the sports are trying to work on better concussion protocols because it's right. a serious deal going on in, in the sports world and yeah. soccer players headbutting the ball. I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of scary if you think about all the sports that yeah can cause so many brain injuries. So we really appreciate you sharing your yes, experience ma'am. with concussions. I have one more quick question. I noticed okay. for our listeners, you're wearing sunglasses. Do you have sensitivity to light I from do. the concussions? I okay. do. I, 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 and these are my blue ones. These are the ones I wear outside the house if it's not too well, even when it is sunny right. because it... It, it cools me down. Oh, okay. Like inside, that the fire doesn't burn as hot, you know. So yeah. it, it, I can be kind of calm, starting off, and it helps me to remain in that kind of mode. Yeah. You know, uh, but yes, I do have sensitivity to light. Yeah, I know a lot of brain injury survivors have sensitivity to light, and that's yeah, what I mean. And they really do help. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. really do. Um, yeah. Thank you for asking that question. I really <laughs> didn't think about it. So thank you so much for like answering that that's really cool yes, um, thank you so i just wanted to say like honestly i feel like i have learned so much during this time um i did just want to ask one little thing uh-huh. and i know you mentioned it a little bit about like how like kids and younger versions are playing now and what you're watching on tv now but for the upcoming generations like i really don't think that like football is gonna be like unliked anytime soon but what would you say to the upcoming generations the parents like the kids that are now playing and going on moving on to be professional like what is the one thing that you want to make sure that they know that sports are sports i tell my kids if you're gonna do it you better do it all the way there are risks 
involved with everything. But if you're a sports player, you understand that you 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 give up your body to achieve your goal, you know. But the rules they have now are really, I, I think, pretty good in high school. I think kids manipulate them though. But <laughs> imagine um, that kids manipulating anything. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but but the higher up you go, really look out for yourself. Make yourself important. Um, I didn't. I wasn't important to me. I was important mm-hmm. to other people. I was important to the sport. But to me, I never thought of myself. I always thought of others. And um, yeah, but you have to be selfish a little bit. I, I would say. Learn to be selfish and really listen to your body, you know, and it'll, yeah. you, you, you kind of know once you kind of settle down and you actually listen. Yeah. You know, and that just, is an important thing yeah. to know to listen to your body. It is very important. You know, when something's not right, mm-hmm. if you still have a headache or you're, you know, yeah, dizzy for too long and nausea, or whatever your thing is, you know that something's not right. Yeah. I think that was like the it was a really great last advice to be having for brain injury survivors and especially for football and, and yeah. like athletic people. I think that's awesome to be a little bit selfish on yourself and know that you're important yeah. um, f- for everyone. Yeah. Right. So I think that's really amazing. Good. So I do want to just huge thanks to you. I'm so excited to have met you in person. Finally, I'm so excited yeah. that you joined us today for yeah. the podcast. So thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I, yes. I listen to you guys. I love your show. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. And on that note, everyone else, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe, share, listen at wherever you want. And you can email us at bindwaves at thebind.org. We look forward to your feedback. And again, Brian, we are so happy to have you here today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Bind Waves and continue to support Bind and our nonprofit mission. We support brain injury survivors as they reconnect into the life, the community, and their workplace. And we couldn't do that without great listeners like you. We appreciate each and every one of you. Continue watching. Until next time. Until next time.